picture of a man, this extraordinary man, who has this strategy of luring in both Gentile and luring in both Jew, and being able to demonstrate this marvelous way of a relationship with God, not by law, but by a God who goes into operation and draws people into a relationship with him by his spirit using the vehicle of faith. We're in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, we want to talk about the issue of now confronting, confronting religious arrogance. Confronting religious arrogance. He's done that, but now he's really going to begin to break it down in Romans chapter 3. Well then, we're in verse 9. Well then, should we conclude that we are that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jew or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, not one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. No, not one single person. Their talk is foul like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. So we can see here this whole thing of confronting religious arrogance. He does that. I mean, he takes the argument and he drives it home with Old Testament facts, with Old Testament scripture. You know, it doesn't get any more, you know, tight, any more touchy than when he goes right into the Old Testament to let the Jewish Christians, particularly, and all uh, Christians know, in fact, and all persons, in fact, that, man, you cannot have a sense of arrogance that all have sin. That is from way back from the scriptures. The Old Testament. Remember, when we're looking at the book of Romans, it's a letter that is written. The New Testament, he didn't have it. So what he's alluding to, he's taking his background as a religious Pharisee, as a person with an extensive educational background and knowledge of the scriptures. And he's going back and saying, guys, this is not new, actually, what I'm telling you. It has always been. This thing has never actually been that you could redeem yourself from the law. It's never been that way. It has always been that you're too wretched, that your heart is desperately corrupt, as Jeremiah would say. It has never been that you, could, that you, you, you should have any sense of arrogance whatsoever. We are completely depraved. He wants to let them know. You are sinners indeed. Thank you.